Tonight, wet and windy conditions blast our region, with emergency services kept on high alert. And Wallaroo Hospital secures new doctors to alleviate a crippling shortage. From our seven Spencer Golf Studios, your nightly news with John Hunt begins now. Good evening, everyone. The Air Peninsula and Spencer Gulf have been lashed by heavy rain and strong winds today as a cold front moved across the state. Residents are being urged to remain on high alert over the next 24 hours. Another wet day for the Air Peninsula and Spencer Gulf region. Today's drenching following on from decent totals at the start of the week. We saw 35 millimetres around um, Streaky Bay. Wassam Indus picked up about 14 millimetres. Cleve seen six. Most of the Air Peninsula receiving a soaking while the morning commute was in full swing. Rainfall totals up until 9am. We've seen nine millimetres at Woodna, five millimetres at Sejuna. With winter now upon us, Port Lincoln's SES says today is a reminder for residents to ensure their properties are prepared. So clean around the loose items away from your house. Make sure your gutters are clear and, and free of, of debris so um, any rain that we do have can make its way into your rainwater tanks or at least away from the house. Crews kept busy during the week with fallen trees resulting in a number of call-outs. Predominantly for tree down, uh, being the first real, I guess, wintry day that the region's had this year, um, a lot of trees have, have come to the added weight of the water um, and also those, the gusts of winds that did go across the region. The SES preparing to be on standby into tonight. People do require assistance from a flood or a storm. Um, they can call 132 500. Dylan Smith, 7 Spencer Gulf News. Some relief is in sight for our region's doctor shortage crisis, with Wallaroo Hospital to soon welcome three new professionals to the team. The move is part of the Rural Health Workforce Plan, with locals welcoming the much-needed postings. It's been a long time coming, but the wait is finally over. It's a very exciting time for the York and Northern Local Health Network. It is something really, I'm really excited to see to try and do something with a model of, you know, to bring more doctors into the regions. The Wallaroo Hospital is set to receive three new full-time salaried doctors. They will replace locums who come and go, helping to build a sustainable health service model. Having salaried doctors into the community is something really good, that they, they brings continuity of care, standardised practice within the community and some ownership of the community as well. The new trio will be supported by two locums as well as general practitioners. The member for Narunga backing the announcement, saying it's a reflection of the work done since the Rural Health Workforce Plan was released in 2019. Now in 2021 we are advertising to fill those three positions which will be a wonderful boost to healthcare on the York Peninsula. should provide far greater continuity of care far more reliability when seeing a doctor and just be a general improvement to our healthcare here on the Copper Coast. It's hoped the new salaried doctors will help address staffing concerns at the hospital while also helping to combat the regional doctor shortage. Adopt them as part of the community, they are your doctors and look after them and so that they can provide the best care in looking after them, uh, after the community. Katrina Musson, 7 Spencer Golf News. Southern Launch has been granted approval by the South Australian Government to begin testing rockets. An assessment panel has given the company the green light, meaning it can use its launch site at Whalers Way. The news has been welcomed by the member for Flinders. Should it move forward, then all of a sudden we here on Air Peninsula and here in South Australia are, are a part of uh, the next momentum, I suppose, into space. Strict conditions, however, are in place, including that nearby residents be informed before a planned launch. There's been another setback for Australia's vaccine rollout. The ATAGI today saying the AstraZeneca vaccine should only be given to those over the age of 60, but people who've already had their first shot without major side effects should still get their second dose. The government says Pfizer will be made available to those in the 40 to 59 year old bracket, but Broken Hill locals will need to wait until the 28th of June to have access. The team are really um, putting the finishing touches in terms of um, setting up the clinics. 
Meanwhile, the South Australian government is putting plans in place for pharmacies in regional areas to offer COVID vaccinations in the near future. Police were out in force across Broken Hill during the long weekend, but officers today are thanking the community for doing the right thing on and off the road. During their high visibility operation, just one alleged drink driver was caught. On the highway, in the town and in your rearview mirror, Operation Pariac aimed at cracking down on poor behaviour with a strong police presence in the Silver City. We have uh, extra police rostered for those long weekends and they're, they're requested to specifically be out there, not only doing road enforcement, but just ensuring the general safety of the community. Police thankful drivers did the right thing. Of around 300 breath tests, police say only one driver was caught over the limit. I think a lot of people uh, heeded the message about go out, enjoy yourself, but be safe while doing it. A 31-year-old local stopped on William Street at 2.15 on Saturday morning. He allegedly returned a high-range blood alcohol reading after being arrested and taken to the police station. He'll be suspended until he faces court and then it's up to the court to impose uh, any further sanctions. Police weren't out just on roads but the streets as well. Operation Pariac seeing a COVID compliance blitz across regional New South Wales. The good news continued with the Western Region the only area where no COVID warnings were issued to businesses, nor were there any reported incidents of antisocial behaviour. It is great that police are out there and can interact with the community, make sure everyone's safe without having to enforce the letter of the law. Lachlan Eater, 7 Spencer Golf News. Still to come tonight, calls for Broken Hills Trades Hall to be given World Heritage status. And a while a hotel secures government funding for a major upgrade. Welcome back. The Taj Mahal, Great Wall of China and Grand Canyon could soon be joined by Broken Hills Trades Hall on UNESCO's World Heritage List. A multinational effort is underway to recognise the building as a site of global importance. With its stunning architecture and rich history, the Trades Hall is a building woven into Broken Hill life. But this iconic local building could soon be on the world stage. To get World UNESCO Heritage Listing for the Broken Hill Trades Hall will be uh, a very prominent thing. It adds to the heritage listing of Broken Hill. UNESCO recognises sites of cultural, historic or social importance. Our hall, the location of many significant union movements, unique in still serving the purpose it did more than a century ago. That's quite unique. Other buildings have been turned into cafes and museums and, um, you know, have restaurants in them and things like that. The bid for UNESCO listing is a truly multinational effort. Started by a Danish museum more than 15 years ago, it's now grown to include other trade halls in four different countries. Places similar to the trade hall all around the world are included in this nomination and so far there are five partners in this project. The Trades Hall Trust says securing a spot on the prestigious list will help attract funding and visitors as well as secure the building's future. We'll have a heritage management plan going forward which will help us preserve the building. So that will guide future generations of how to look after the building. To ensure the hall will always have a place in the hill. Lachlan Eater, 7 Spencer Golf News. The Age Rights Advocacy Service has visited Port Lincoln this week, raising awareness on an important topic. Its tour coinciding with World Elder Abuse Awareness Day, which shines a light on some of the most vulnerable in our community. Sharing a meal and stories, Indigenous elders and students gather together in solidarity. It is important because it teaches our young students um, all about respect and making sure that they do listen to the elders' um, stories and how they can help them in the community. Community leaders sharing advice on how to tell their stories through artwork. Those attending say elders hold a great deal of importance in Indigenous communities. We are the educators, we are the, 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 the people who raise the kids advise the kids and bring respect to our communities. 
The session was run by ARIS, a not-for-profit organisation providing information and advocacy for older people across South Australia. The group is in Port Lincoln to recognise World Elder Abuse Awareness Day. It's a program that ARIS delivers to bring elders together with young people, one to build awareness around elders, but also to bring attention to the care that is required by our elders, keeping them safe, honouring them and respecting them. Meg says the team has been blown away with the welcome they've received. The reception we've received in, in Lincoln, even in, in the troubled time that we have at the moment, has been amazing, absolutely amazing. Dylan Smith, 7 Spencer Golf News. A Wyala Hotel is getting a multi-million dollar upgrade with support from the state's highest tourism body. The Air Hotel has received more than $400,000 in grant money from the Tourism Commission, with a new takeaway shop part of the plans. There's new things in the pipeline for this well-known Wyala pub. The Air Hotel is getting ready to receive a $1.4 million refurbishment. A new look interior and exterior is planned, along with a brand new outlet, the Air Pantry, to showcase local produce. One thing that COVID has definitely taught us is that we need to embrace and support our local community and that's what we're trying to do as a group and as a hotel. Also receiving a makeover, the front lobby, kitchen and dining area. $430,000 of funding has been supplied by South Australia's Tourism Commission, with its boss passionate about bringing visitors to the northern Spencer Gulf. This is really exciting because, again, they're going to showcase the great local produce. I mean, I this, is, this is the story of what our country and our state has to offer. He's hoping the finished product will be the catalyst for tourists to come and see what Wyala and the surrounding region has to offer. What we have seen since COVID uh, is significant increase in terms of, um, you know, South Australians getting out, but also Australians coming to discover South Australia. We were very lucky and we are very, very grateful to get the help from um, the South Australian government to refurbish this beautiful hotel. Mark Zeta, 7 Spencer Golf News. Stay with us. Two new projects announced for the Southern Flinders Precinct and a new NDIS service provider launches in Wyala. Wyala residents are urged to submit their recommendations and help name campsites along the northern coastline. It's part of a push by council to bring more campers to the region. Officials want to be able to reference and monitor the sites and help emergency services better locate those in need. The survey closes this weekend. To take part, visit the Council's Facebook page. Two new projects will soon get underway at the Southern Flinders Ranges as part of the $10 million precinct. A multi-day walking experience and infrastructure upgrades to campgrounds are both hoped to lure more tourists to the area. Shining a spotlight on the state's $10 million Southern Flinders Ranges project. Recognising the man remarkable Alligator Gorge, Talawi, Willawi, uh, Warabara, uh, Beetaloo Reservoir, these places are real destinations and they're on right. New projects are set to commence in the area after design contracts were awarded to two South Australian companies. It will see a multi-day hiking experience gorgeous walk developed east of Port Piri along with infrastructure upgrades to the Mambre Creek campgrounds. We've got this $10 million and it is going to specific projects but I don't actually want this work to finish. I want that we just keep moving on, that we get another budget and another budget and another budget. The Environment Minister says the project is tracking along well with construction on the new sites expected to start in the coming months. The whole project is going to take uh, the best part of a year to complete, but we are hoping that the vast majority of this big Southern Flinders Rangers project will be done by the end of 2022. The member for Stewart says it's an exciting time for the region. We want local people and visitors to our area to be able to, to get all of the benefits of the spectacular Southern Flinders Rangers as soon as possible. Katrina Musson, 7 Spencer Golf News. Children and young adults living with disabilities in Wyala are about to get a boost in services available to them. The Kudos Group has now established themselves in the city and is keen to help people reach their goals. Helping children and young adults with special needs to reach their full potential. 
That's the manager of Kudos Services, who are keen to improve the lives of those with disabilities across the Northern Spencer Gulf. We've had a great welcome from people. I think there's a lot of uh, demand for our services. Um, we've been doing some fly-in, fly-out services for the last 12 months. Mr Johnson is visiting the city, accompanied by locally-based therapist Amy McLaughlin, to get to know the community and understand how they can help them. He's keen to network with more organisations in order to bring better outcomes to people living with a disability. It's just about letting people in the area know we're now, we're now here, here full time uh, and we've got some capacity to support people and, uh, and yeah, to come and talk to us. Miss McLaughlin says it's important their clients are able to achieve their goals. They can be a little bit behind um, depending on their abilities, inabilities, capabilities. So it's really, really important for them to have someone to assist them and to guide them. She urges those who are considering using therapy services to get in contact. The people here, the families and clients have been so, so grateful and yeah, really, really stoked to have people here that are able to help them, their families and their kids especially. Mark Zeta, 7 Spencer Golf News. A young gun in Broken Hill footy will take a major step in his professional career this weekend. 17-year-old Adam Slattery selected by the GWS Giants Academy to play against Tasmania in the under-19s NAB League. This is definitely my biggest step. Um, it's probably the biggest game I've ever going to play so far in my life, so yeah, pretty big. The league is a major talent pool for recruiters. Sunday's game will be live streamed for locals wanting to join in on the action. And we wish him well. Stay with us after the break. We'll check what's biting in the Spencer Gulf this weekend. And we'll have the latest weather details with Alex Sykes. Hello again. Time now to go around the Gulf and see what's biting when we drop a line this weekend. Here's our fishing experts with their tips. G'day and welcome to this week's fishing tips from Port Augusta, Jewel of the North. Well, it's been a couple of good rains, uh, so a try up and around the creeks and that. You'll generally find some silver white uh, around Chinaman Creek and also up in the Port Patterson area. There'll be some garfish uh, with this nice cloudy night, so I'll be right to the surface there too, so try getting a nice uh, or moonless night. King George Whiting on the boat was actually a little bit further north, even as far north as the, the old powerhouse site. And there has been the odd kingfish being seen and being caught up in the powerhouse area as well. The squid, they're just about everywhere at the moment. Uh, the best catch, as I obviously always say, is the last 20 minutes before last light, drifting along the shacks. And that's all we have from the Jewel of the North. Welcome another week around the Gulf Fishing Tips. What a week we've had. Some thunder, some lightning, and I bet you that scared every bit of fish that we have around the place. The front of um, Port Davis River, they are actually pulling on some really big King George whiting. We've seen some beautiful salmon out there as well. Some of the guys have been telling me that they've seen some snook around the place as well, so it's worthwhile having a shot. Don't forget our good old garfish while you're out there. Port Piri at the moment, it seems to be bringing on some good-sized King George whiting, top end of Ward Spit, Checker Boy, Eastern Shoal. But if you're coming around the third creek patches, there's always a good catch. Be careful over the weekend. We'll see you next week. Hi, Wallace Fishing Tips this week. Well, we have had the bloodworm run, which did slow things down a little. However, still some nice fish had been caught in the past week. We had some nice King George whiting coming from the Mount, Mount Young grounds. Also some good numbers of squid. Land-based around Wyala, down towards Point Lowly and Becky Point, some really good numbers of squid coming in from there too. Also a, a sprinkle of salmon in the same areas. G'day and welcome to Fishing Tips in Port Lincoln. Well, the salmon have been going really well on our south coast from Sleaford to Wanna at the moment in the National Park, so quite a few fish in the two to three kilo size. Back inside the bay, there's been some good squid caught around Murray's Point and also up along the North Shore and around Boston Island. Best reports of whiting we've had over the past week have been from Taylor's Landing. Moving over to the Coffin Bay side, there's been quite a few salmon trout in the bay system and even a few salmon up to around a kilo around some of the racks. Well, that's all for this week. We'll see you again with more tips next week. To the weather now. And after today's wintry blast, it's time to check how the next few days are shaping up. With the details, here's Alex Sykes. 
Thanks, John. That's right. And as reported earlier, the Gulf region received an absolute drenching and residents should be on standby into tonight. From 3 p.m., a shower or two in Port Augusta, 17. Partly cloudy in Cooper Pedy, also 17. Showers in Port Lincoln and 16 degrees. Looking further out across the region now, Port Pirie, Kadena and Cleve, all 14. It was a max of 15 in Woodna. Broken Hill, Whale and Adelaide were all 16. Clare reached 12 degrees. Taking a look at the satellite image now, scattered cloud over central and southern South Australia with a cold front is generating rain, showers and storms, mainly across the southeast. High cloud across the north is not bringing any rain. Moving on to tomorrow's weather outlook now and we'll start with the Gulf waters. Northwest to southwesterly winds 15 to 20 knots, seas 1 to 2 metres and south to southwesterly swell also 1 to 2 metres. And a short time ago, there were a number of warnings current for the Gulf including a marine wind warning and a warning to sheep graziers. Port Lincoln showers and 15 tomorrow, Cleve 14, Woodna partly cloudy also set to reach a high of 15 degrees there. Whaler and Port Augusta a shower of 2 and 16 degrees, Kadena 15. Port Pirie showers easing 16 degrees, Clare showers and 11 and Broken Hill will be partly cloudy and a high of 14. Taking a look at that weekend forecast now and we are able to say goodbye to those wet conditions. Partly cloudy across the region with the mid with temperatures set to be in the mid-teens on Saturday. Similar conditions forecast for Sunday with temperatures also forecast to be in the mid-teens and heating up slightly on Monday. Mainly fine conditions across the Gulf with similar temperatures again. I hope everyone stays safe and dry tonight. That's all the weather from me and it's back to you, John. That's good news. Thanks, Alex. And that's the local news this Thursday evening. Thanks for joining us. I'll have updates later, and we will be back tomorrow night at the earlier time of 6.30pm. Until then, enjoy your evening. Good night.